Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your Pick a Card reading focusing on how you have changed. We're going to look at some cards representing where you were in the past and a few cards looking at where you are now and that'll kind of show us what kind of journey of transformation you have been on. So go ahead, pick your card. It's about one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile one, here we go. The bottom of your deck is the world card. And I saw that before I saw anything else. And I knew that you guys ha were completing a major cycle, especially a cycle in which you were manifesting something. And then I pop up all of your cards and that's exactly what we see. We got this, uh, I'm actually gonna put your, your world card right in the middle there because who doesn't like to see that? <laughs> so this divine animal card i pulled these to kind of show what lesson you guys have been working on or what you've been working on manifesting you guys got prosperity the peacock this peacock energy i mean there is that element of you know showing off and expressing yourself and kind of you know being flamboyant like showing off your peacock feathers but there's more to it than that it really represents building like a life for yourself and having abundance, having more than enough money, having more than enough free time, having more than enough like security for your family, everything being good, right? Because, you know, if you're going to show off your peacock feathers, if you're going to be flamboyant, you want to have that like stable, secure base. So that's what you guys have been working on. And that is also really reflected in these cards. In your past, these three cards are representing kind of where you've been, where you were. And these ones over here are representing where you are now. So you've got the Eight of Pentacles and the Five of Cups. I feel like this Five of Cups, like you guys really felt like this. Can you see this like tear coming out of her eye? Like, I feel like you were really in some kind of like place of struggle and just feeling like never having enough and feeling like you were separated, maybe a little alienated, just, you know, not good times, but that you guys like weren't sitting around feeling sorry for yourselves. You weren't sitting around playing the victim. You guys got to work. Eight of pentacles. You were like, okay, I can pull myself up by the bootstraps. I can get myself out of this situation. You know, I'm not going to just wallow in you know, being the victim, I don't feel like you, know, like you guys like were really like not doing the victimhood mentality thing. <laughs> you guys were totally pulling yourselves up by your bootstraps and it worked out for you so well. You got the judgment card, which I think there's two elements to that. First, uh, it's just, you know, in, in the, in the major arcana, in the judgment card, uh, is followed by the world card. So you guys basically, worked all through all of your lessons, all through all of your problems and got to the point where, you know, it's, it was almost like judgment day was here. You guys finally got to experience the reckoning where you were like, where the energy was like rebalanced. You no longer had to sit in this eight of uh, five of cups. You got to reap the rewards of all of your hard work. And it was like, I feel like most of you probably had a moment of like finally getting recognized or finally having everything kind of in life straighten out and just finally you got to go ah like you know i had still have a long way to go i still have like my, my life still has room for improvement but absolutely here is like a point of stability a point of having enough and a point of getting what i feel i deserve you guys got that um the other element with the judgment card is getting to be able to share whatever you have to share you know, that could be, you know, your your creative skills, your cooking skills, your social skills, you know, job skills. Like, you guys have something to share with the world, something to show off, something that, um, like, it's like throat chakra stuff. I, like, to me, there's an element of, like, throat chakra healing here where you guys are finally able to stand in your confidence and show off your peacock feathers. So that, like, I feel like that came probably pretty close together, maybe even hand in hand, where you got to, like, a point of, you know, general, like practical life stability and also confidence in yourself and able to project yourself out into the world and to be your peacock. So that was the journey you guys were coming on. And here you are now. I mean, look, you got, I mean, we have the hanged man here, um, but also the emperor and the queen of wands. So <laughs> like queen of wands and the emperor, Oh, first of all, I mean, that's a really balanced masculine and feminine energy, which is always great to see. 
especially since with this hanged man, you guys, maybe right now you're feeling like you're hitting a little bit of a plateau, uh, like kind of in the sense that you're like waiting, you're percolating for greater things to come. You see the greater things on the horizon, but um, try to not get too impatient. I would say like, make sure to like appreciate how far you've come. You guys, it's kind of like, you know, playing a video game, like any kind of RPG where you're like, you're just trying to get to the next level. You're just trying to level up so that you can, you know, spend your XP points and, you know, get your new skills. And then you get to the next level and you totally don't care about that anymore because now you're just trying to get to the next, next level, constantly trying to level up. So I would say, don't be afraid, you know, take a minute to stop and smell the roses and take a minute to really appreciate what you have done. Appreciate all your accomplishments. Appreciate that you pulled yourself up out of whatever your pit was and like, you know, pat yourself on the back. You guys deserve it. Um, and know that you have this foundation of like supreme, like sovereign authority, the emperor and the queen of wands. Like, you know, I just feel like you guys can like sit on your proverbial throne and like you're going to be able to, you know, I want to say like manipulate events, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that, you know, the power of your like presence and like the life you've managed to build for yourself. It's such a strong foundation and it's going to be you're going to be like an anchor point for other people. I feel like you might have a few people like in your orbit, like family um, or friends or, you know, employees maybe who are kind of uh, or even like followers and some kind of if you're in any kind of like social media thing, um, people who are a little bit in your orbit. And that's a, that's a good thing because, you know, you can really um, inspire them and be a role model for them. Yeah, like <laughs> you guys are really ready to level up ag like again. Um, and, you know, I'm actually going to make a video probably next week about like, you know, this is comparing the past to the present. And next week I'm going to do one comparing the present to where you're going. So I don't know, maybe tune into that next week when you when you see it. Um, but yeah, there's just something here about this hanged man of, you know, don't don't be too impatient. Make sure to look within. Um, maybe you guys have had to really like externalize yourselves to, you know, work with work in your environment and to put yourself out there. I mean, we got the peacock, the judgment, the world There's definitely I feel like you guys have been pretty external. So don't forget to like take a moment to look within don't don't forget to like take a chill pill you know and <laughs> you know i want to say do your self-care <laughs> you know self-care is so important right <laughs> stuff like that you know just just take a minute to sit in your own in your own self that that i think would be the one like like piece of advice here the one caveat the one little bit of warning as you know don't be too too externalizing all the time. Don't forget to look within because that is where wisdom comes from. The hanged man gets, gains wisdom and knowledge that he can then apply by looking within, by taking a time out. So if you feel like there's a little bit of a waiting game playing right now, like that's okay. It's gonna like, you know, if the emperor and the queen of wands are, you know, taking a day off to just wait something out, or if they are just waiting for the timing to be right, like that's what a good ruler would do, right? They would if they have changes they want to implement in their kingdom, <laughs> they would wait until the moment is right. So that's what you guys might be doing right now, waiting for the right moment to really blast out and level up again. So yeah, like trust the timing, just, you know, have a sense of the flow of events and, you know, don't try to forge ahead too much. I feel like with you guys, your whole like charging head, like picking yourself up by your bootstraps energy, you might try to like keep bursting through things. Um, but I think now would be a moment to really get in tune with the flow and just wait until the moment is right. And you'll know, you'll know when the moment is right and then you can act. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. I don't think I'm going to pull any Oracle cards or anything because I think you guys are so solid. So congratulations on being awesome. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. The bottom of your deck is the Fool card. This deck is called the Fool Child. I just get you to look at this because I just, I've barely glimpsed at the, your other cards, but I can already tell this is going to be significant to you guys. Some kind of rebirth and fresh start is going on here. I don't know about you guys, but do you guys think this, like, baby doll thing is really creepy? Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll leave this card here and we'll look into the rest of them. 
So I pulled this Divine Animals card to represent the lesson you guys have been working on or like the project you guys have been doing. So this one is Tarantula and uh, the subtext here, I know it's probably hard to see, uh, it says connection. This is all about like feminine cosmic web energy, like literally the interconnection of everything in the cosmos. It is like the world web, but not the internet. It is like everything in all creation, in all the whole omniverse is all connected. Is what <laughs> what that is symbolizing. So that's pretty big for like a personal journey for you guys to have been on. But uh, so these three cards over here represent your past and you've got nine of crystals. It says, uh, this is a really like non-traditional deck. The nine of crystals says narrowness. Interesting interpretation of the nine of crystals. I take this to mean that maybe like your your sense of wealth and abundance and like personal like physical well-being was feeling like maybe you had actually it's still the nine of uh oh the nine of crystals <laughs> that's why sorry you guys i was thinking that the nine of crystals was the nine of pentacles because the crystals in other decks is often pentacles in this deck this is the nine of swords this is the nine of swords so sorry about the confusion there so narrowness no wonder no wonder that this deck, that this subtext for this is narrowness, because nine of crystal, nine of uh, swords is always, always, you know, anxieties and nightmares. So that's not really. This nine of swords is more a feeling like constrained, feeling like like your life had come into a narrow place, into a narrowness, into maybe like everything you have been stifled. Um, like you had no options, like there was nowhere good to go. It's almost like a Saturn return type of thing where, you know, Saturn like squishes you into the dirt and you don't have any good options. You, you just, you feel like you're in a narrow place. That's why this is narrowness. So the other one here is strength. So despite that, despite your narrowness, you had the inner strength to kind of see yourself through. I almost feel like you guys were like, imagine somebody like tied up in like with rope around their wrists and ankles and they just like burst their bonds with the sheer force of their, their will. Um, like you guys were not having any of that. You were like, I cannot be stuck here. I cannot be trapped here. Like my life cannot be reduced to this. It has to go bigger. It has to go better. You guys wanted to expand in a major way. And I mean, look at all these major arcana. So <laughs> on top of that, you've got the death card. So you guys did, you guys did bust out of those bonds. You guys did get out of that narrow place and you did work towards, you know, connecting with like the whole goddamn omniverse death. You know, you went through the Phoenix transformation Maybe something had to burn to the ground. Maybe you really had to sacrifice in order to get your restart. It reminds me of like when I was 24, I left my entire life behind and moved to a new country to get married. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that had to be done. I like I, you know, that that was part of my journey. That was what had to happen. But it was obviously like traumatic at the same time. I had this whole new fresh start, but I had to leave literally my whole life behind like it was like a whole new fresh start it was like being like reborn it's that level of of thing like maybe you guys like went through an extreme external transformation like that or maybe it was like a really really internal like completely redoing your like sense of self your identity um you know your your paradigms your your thought paradigms maybe how you deal with your emotions like major transformation because you know you've got death the fool and this, but this was all in service of seeing the bigger picture and getting connected. Like this is probably some kind of spiritual awakening for, for a lot of you. Um, if, if it, if this played out more like in the earth plane, maybe you guys did something where you, you know, I could see somebody who was like a total hermit, totally just alone all the time. And then they end up like entering into some kind of, you know, business or group endeavor or family thing where suddenly they're, they're like part of a much bigger project. It's something here is about connecting with the big picture. So that's where you guys 
were you have like i feel like your you know your death and rebirth transformation was in the past and now you're stepping out into like the brave new world as you know the fool your as your inner child is being given a chance to step out so for where you are right now we have the nine of wands integrity the chariot and the four of cups <laughs> anger um yeah i i can relate to this so nine of wands <sighs> always that element of like exhaustion i mean this nine of wands it says integrity because that's what you're doing you guys are standing um like you're looking you're having a moment to look back like look at this person is looking back before they like finally go through the final phase of initiation they're taking a moment to just think about what's happened and they're going okay like i committed i've come this far i have to keep going but I feel like you could be having a definite like moment of like not necessarily regret because I feel like you guys are too sure of yourselves to really like second guess like decisions. But you can still have moments of like, wow, was this really worth it? Wow, this like was kind of more dramatic than I thought it would be or was going to be a lot more work than I thought it would be. Or really, you're kind of feeling like, wow, look at how much I sacrificed. Look at how much I left behind. And you're just trying to get OK with that. And I really, really understand that. Like when I, you know left my life behind and started a new life in a new country, it was like, man, I don't, I never regretted it because I obviously wanted to be with my husband. And, but like, man, just having to sit there and realize all that I had left behind, like it was hard sometimes, right? <laughs> it was hard. And same when I go through like personal, like paradigm shifts, you know, sometimes I look back on my old self and go, wow, you know, old, old me wouldn't really like new me. Like old me is sitting there being judgy, judgy, judgmental about new me. And it's kind of hard to reconcile that all. So, you know, there is this element of integrity here. That's what the card is called. So I know that you guys are going to keep pushing forward and you're going to get past these kind of like echoes from the past. Um, but it's definitely like a little bit of <sighs> plaguing you a little bit. Yet you are charging forward because that's what <laughs> that's what you guys do the chariot you are continuing to push forward you are going to go into the last phase of your initiation um but we still have this four of cups in this deck it is this is called anger yeah that brings me right back to what i was saying about the nine of wands feeling a little bit bitter maybe guys and i totally get it like i had moments after my big move where, you know, all my friends back home were going to these like shows that I wanted to go to and hanging out at the old bars I used to like. And they were going on hikes in my old beautiful mountain home. And I just, ah, oh, I was missing out on so much. It would make me so angry. It was like, why did I have to give up all of that? Why did I have to give up my life in order to have a new life? Why can't I have it all? But with the death card here, guys, like something has to be left behind and it's totally okay to feel like bitterness and resentfulness and anger. And I know from experience that, you know, that eventually fades, but you have to make sure to deal with it. If you guys are feeling angry and bitter and resentful, don't just like let that fester. You need to like face it, like really, really face it. And if something needs to be done to like address what you're feeling angry about, then address it. Just don't let it fester. I don't feel like you guys would because with this death card, there's a certain like scorpionic energy, you know, so you guys can like cycle through it and blast through it, you know, especially with the chariot card and the full card and the strength card, just just keep working, working through that so that you can carry on forward. Yeah, charge forward like the chariot. It's like you guys went through your death process, process and you're being reborn as like, you know, the fool, your new self. And now the key is to <laughs> nine of wands in the chariot is to keep charging forward kind of despite all of that. I don't feel like you guys really want to turn back. You just have feelings of you know, lingering feelings of doubts and resentments and all of that. So charge forward, guys. Keep going. The chariot, this is your path forward. That looks like Jupiter there. Yeah. Just take a look at this. Let's take a look at this card. You're charging down this highway. Forge ahead. Don't look back. And let me see. What oracle cards for you guys?
Okay, I'm going to pull, I think, two of these Black Moon Oracle cards. Also, if you want to find out where this kind of, where this chariot is taking you, I think next week I'm going to make a video doing, you know, you now versus you in the future. So this is you in the past versus you now. And next week we'll see where everybody is going <laughs> from here. So let's see what's going on, what these cards have for you. Aquarius, I know. Yeah, I feel like this is confirmation of you guys like sitting in in yourself. Like you know exactly what you need to do. Even if you have like emotional hangups about it, like you make your decisions based on like your inner knowing. Like you know, you guys know. So that's why I'm not like too worried about, you know, your four of cups anger, you know, your nine of swords narrowness, you know, with this nine of wands kind of exhaustion. You guys know what you need to do. So you just need to do it. That's it's like you guys don't need to know anything else other than what you know. <laughs> like, does that make sense? It, to me, that's about your inner knowing, your inner knowing, that Aquarian energy of. Yeah, and, you know, that's actually really cool getting the Aquarius card with connection, this tarantula, because Aquarius to me is all about it. It's this complicated two sides of the same coin thing where you have, you know, Uranus trying to get everybody to be an, a radical individual. I know about that because I have Uranus conjunct my sun. <laughs> like I was literally born. It's like the sun was coming up to Uranus and I was born at eight, eight months gestation. So I was born a month early and it was like, oh, you know, got to get born now because like the sun conjuncted Uranus. <laughs> and so there's always an element of like surprise and individuation and like radical individuation with Aquarius. But it's also like, OK, once you've done that, you need to connect with the collective and with the whole universe because there's also that networking and bringing togetherness, like togetherness aspect of Aquarius. So yeah, those, those line up for me really well. But the message, the main message there, I think is to just sit in your inner knowing, like your claircognizance for a lot of you, you guys know, you just know things, just go with it because you guys know North node life's purpose. This has all been for a reason, guys. I knew that this was like a major, major journey. Look at this, your North Node. You guys are charging ahead. All of this has been part of aligning you with your purpose, your mission, why you came here, what like what you're doing. So that is that is why this transformation had to be a little uncomfortable because something had to be left behind so to get you aligned with your purpose. Yeah, like, you know... I don't know what kind of like transits you guys have been going through, but yeah, something keeps bringing me back to astrology in this reading. I guess because of Aquarius, right? So <laughs> I think you guys have definitely been through some kind of transit. I don't know if that's like your Jupiter uh, return, you know, when you're like 24 or your Saturn return or some other kind of just random transit with a planet like aspecting your sun or something like doing, doing stuff. But this has all been to get you into your life's purpose. So if you guys don't know what your North Node is, whenever this one comes, comes up in a reading, I would say, like, check that out. You know, find out what sign it's in. And for me, almost more important is the house that your North Node is in. So if you can find that out and read about it, that can really help you make sense of what's happening. You might have been pushed into, like, weird situations and just going, like, this isn't me. Why do I have to do this? It's because your North Node, like, literally makes you learn to be the opposite of who you were. Sort of, right? You don't, you don't need to, like completely leave behind who you were but you need to like make sure that your past self is like leveled up and you're only taking the best aspects of your past self and leaving behind like the dead skin of your past self and you're going to have to learn new skills new ways of being new thought patterns because you need to align with a completely new life's purpose that is probably rather foreign to you so yeah i think that was the message here some of you are going to really benefit by thinking about north node or even if you don't want to like view it from an astrological view, just try to figure out what the universe is pushing you towards and align yourself with it. Because there is a mission for you that is going to is already requiring great change and shifts within you. And it's all going to be for the best for, you know, your best benefit and also for everybody's best benefit because you're connected with the cosmic web. So this is this is good for everybody, literally everybody, even you. <laughs> and I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. 
Hey, Pa3, welcome to your reading. I pulled this Divine Animals card to represent the, like, lessons you've been learning or the journeys you've been through, the projects you've been working on. Here you have hair, and I know it's hard to see, the subtext is cycles. This card is all about getting in tune with, like, cycles of nature and the cycles of yourself and kind of learning how everything everything is a cycle in some sense and i think kind of the like leveled up version of that is knowing that everything is a spiral so even though things cycle around and cycle through when you come back to the same point again it's not exactly the same because now you're like one notch up and out on a spiral you know just think about how a spiral is slightly different than you know like concentric circles for example so these cards over here represent where you were, you know, the old you, and these cards over here represent where you are now, the new you. So what jumps out at me over here is this Six of Swords in reverse. You know, so this is what it looks like face up. Six of Swords is, you know, as you probably know, all about transitioning and making a journey, leaving behind a painful past and going to greener pastures. Within reverse, I feel like there was some kind of resistance to that transition. Because of the Seven of Cups here. Like, yeah, Knight of Cups, I think you had some kind of offer, maybe even an offer of love, but basically an offer of a new life, of a new land, like somewhere new to go that was seemed really promising, but you couldn't, like, make up your mind about it. Seven of Cups, like, looking at everything going... I don't know. I can't, I can't decide. I don't know what I want. Like almost like trouble tuning into your heart. In fact, we have quite a few. Yeah, we have Knight of Swords and Queen of Swords and Six of Swords here. So quite a few swords. Yeah, I feel like maybe you were trying to make the decision like with your rational mind and that wasn't really cutting it. Um, ideally, you would have like tuned into your heart space and figured out, you know, what was be, like most resonant for you and but you know you were having trouble doing that and this isn't to you know criticize like everybody has trouble with that uh from time to time and that just means that you know you were working on getting in tune like with the with the like your own like personal cycles maybe getting in tune with your heart and getting in tune with your cycles and like tuning yourself to be in cycles with with like nature and the cosmos really like this opportunity for transition like presented itself, but maybe you didn't quite like pick up on it as soon as you could have, or you know, you were hesitant to do it, or because of other stuff that you were doing or other stuff that was going on, you couldn't like everything was just a little bit out of alignment, I feel like. And that's okay, because that's what you were learning to do. You were learning to get yourself aligned with your heart, learning to get yourself aligned with like the flow, the ever mixing flow of events. But I feel like you eventually did make that transition, or if you haven't, you're probably like working on that like right now. Maybe you're finally starting to be like, okay, I gotta get on that boat, I gotta go. You know, even if this isn't like some of you, this could be a physical transition, but others it might just be like an internal, an internal cycle you're going through. You know, these the energies, some people manifest more energies internally and some people manifest more energies externally. I've actually noticed that like some people seem to manifest like all of their life's problems, like all of like, you know, the various energetic patterns they could be going through. They like manifest them all like entirely through people, like people who have their lives like is just running from like one interpersonal problem and conflict and relationship to another. And I, I never really understood that. And then I realized, oh, well, it's like they're just learning. They're just going through these patterns of energy through like the metaphor of interpersonal relationships but it doesn't have like for me it's obviously not like that you know i manifest all of my all of these energies like as internal conflicts so you know that's why that's just to explain why you know i can't really say for you if it's internal or external because for everybody it's going to be different it's just you know how we you know how we designed our lives for ourselves like you know from the level of our consciousness so anyway where are you at now knight of swords temperance this is the big one queen of swords so still kind of sitting in like a mental energy something happened really quickly yeah so if you haven't done it yet you're about to do it like imminently knight of swords that's i think like basically taking this upside down six of swords turning it right side up and going on your journey the knight of swords acts like he acts now he does things now so yeah maybe you had a period of sitting there trying to figure out which cup to drink out of and eventually you just like grabbed one <laughs> 
you know, or like you couldn't figure out what road to go down and eventually you just picked one, uh, which is and sometimes that's what you got to do. Right. And on some level, that could have been like your heart finally speaking out and just like injecting you into action, going like no more um, waiting around, no more humming and hawing time to just do. This temperance card is interesting. So this is like this isn't. I never really read the temperance card as in people think temperance and they think like not drinking alcohol, right? They think like the temperance movement. That's not really it for me. It is about making like bringing together um, like all the four elements really and making something stronger. So whatever you guys went through in the past, you are like really overcoming that because you are like being forged in the fires of your own experience. Yeah, forged in the fires. That that phrase is like really kind of rolling through my head. And we have all of these swords. So something has really come together for you guys. And you might be feeling a little bit like squeezed or a little bit shell-shocked because of all of these like pressures that have come together to mold you into who you are today. But that is working out for you because now you are the queen of swords. Look at her, this crow sitting on her throne. You can imagine her like guiding her kingdom, guiding her army from her throne. The caution with the queen of, she definitely has discernment, which was an important thing for you guys to learn uh, facing the seven of cups and, you know, resisting this, this change. So she, you have learned a certain level of discernment, which has allowed you to temper yourself into something new. And I feel like the Queen of Swords also represents the fact that you have learned the lesson that you needed to learn. You know, you came from these like impulsive night energies into sitting in your sovereign consciousness. I feel like it's weird to see the Queen of Swords sitting next to these hairs with these cycles. Um, you might be in a place right now where you try to control the cycles around you and that's not necessarily bad if you felt if in your past you felt like your life was kind of out of control or that maybe even you were out of control that you didn't know how to make choices and or you just couldn't get like your schedule together you couldn't get your sense of like willpower together um when we we all feel like that sometimes and when we feel like that eventually we overcompensate by trying to like control either our everything about ourselves and being like super like morally upstanding or just being really disciplined with ourselves or we try to like control our environment and both of those are problematic but i mean i don't need to you know lecture you guys about being micromanagey or anything um if you feel like that's a problem you can you can lecture yourself about it <laughs> um so i think yeah there's a little message here of don't try to control the cycles like more than necessary. If there is a certain level of chaos in your life, if you do need more discipline, that's all good. But be discerning about how far you take that. Especially, yeah, just don't let that kind of discipline and like organization become toxic to you or to anybody around you. You want to find the balance and you guys can because of this temperance energy. It is finding like the new the new better way of being and remember that this temperance really has an emphasis on water mixing these waters so that can really help you balance out all of these mental energies and bringing back to the cycle so try to understand that you know everything is going through the cycles just imagine like generations of bunnies <laughs> generations of bunnies right everything is going through cycles and this is also this card also talks about like self-transformation um, basically like being put into an egg and like hatching out of an egg and becoming the new you. So yeah, just be careful not to try to stop the cycles. That's the danger because you learned that in the past, right? You resisted the cycles a little bit and now you got to learn to flow with, with the cycles. You got to learn to ride the spiral. That that's That's it. I, I hope that metaphor makes sense to, to everybody. You ride the spiral. Ride the spiral to the end. You may just go where no one's been. Spiral out. Keep going. <laughs> and 
I think that was the message. I'm going to I'm going to call it there actually. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey Pile 4, welcome to your reading. These cards over here represent your past journey, kind of who you were, where you were, and these cards over here represent your energies for right now, where you're at now, who you are now. And I pulled this divine animal card to represent the lessons you've been going through or the journey that you've been on. You guys got tiger subtext right on there is will i think the tiger beautifully <laughs> represents this you guys have been like working to become the king of the jungle like to be completely independent completely sovereign i don't feel like in a controlling way over other people but maybe controlling over your own self like really just like you wanted to get to the top of something you want you had a, an image for how you wanted to be and you guys got there because over here you guys got two kings king of wands king of swords so like and we have a tiger over again the king of the king of wands is a tiger king of swords is this uh pelican i think um yeah so like this is like major maturity major like success major a sovereignty just like top of the food chain apex predator like you guys got to the top of whatever you were trying to get to the top of and even if you're sitting there watching this video in some kind of like you're going like no that's not me i'm in this horrible life situation you know my i don't like my job sucks or i don't even have a job or i live in this horrible living situation and i don't have the ideal partner and blah 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 blah, blah. that doesn't matter this is about like your inner being your inner being like you know the tiger doesn't worry about any of that the tiger just is and he knows like i don't think tigers suffer from any lack of self-confidence or self-worth they know that they are everything they need to be and they just sit there in their power knowing that like they don't they literally don't need anything but like their teeth and their claws and their strength and their power in order to survive and thrive and to be like an object of fear right? The tiger rules the jungle, guys. And that is you. That is what you cultivated for yourselves. But <laughs> now something is starting to shift because in the past you have the fool. Um, so it was almost like you got to this like plateau and then you like almost like gave something away, like gave it up. Like maybe like you worked so hard to get something and then when you got it, you realized you didn't want it or you worked so hard to like cultivate this strength and authority and like sovereignty and then realize that you know maybe there's still something missing that you still need maybe connection with other people you know you still you know it's kind of like somebody who worked so hard for decades to cultivate a career and then they realize that they never found their partner they never had a family they never took a vacation they never did anything else they were so focused on their career that like the rest of their life just like pfft. so and then they could really have to open up their heart to get their rest of their life together at a later stage in life. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be that for you guys, but you know, that's, that's the energy. That's the example of maybe you were so focused on one thing you, and then you realized, Oh, what about everything else in my life? That's sort of what I see this full energy being. And then right now we have a tower. So you guys are having a tower moment flanked by the moon and the nine of wands. So yeah. Okay. The tower being paired with the nine of wands and the moon. Yeah, the nine of wands really reinforces what I was just saying about getting somewhere and then realizing like maybe this isn't what you wanted or, you know, this isn't enough on its own. Maybe even starting to question, was this all worth it? A little bit of exhaustion, right? Nine of wands, this guy feels pretty Im Im like embattled, pretty beaten up. He's still standing strong. But he's sitting there going like, why did I sign up for this war, right? <laughs> this is, this, this took a lot out of me. I sacrificed a lot to get here. Was it really worth it having that, those moments? And with the moon here, we have, you know, illusions. And I feel like your intuition or your emotional body is like coming in. Because look at this, there was like no emotionality, like in, you know, king of wands with the tiger, king of swords obviously all intellectual and mind energy. And then this will based tiger, you guys were like really in a place of developing your mental body and like your, just your sense of will, like injecting your will out into the world in order to 
be sovereign and to be confident and to shine bright. And those are all really good things. But since you guys like reached this level of mastery of being the kings, now you're like, I man, I know how so how this can go. I went through this like whole 10 year thing of becoming entirely left brain, becoming entirely like intellectual and scientific and all of that. And then one day I like woke up and I was like, whatever happened to my right brain? Whatever happened to being like the intuitive, creative, imaginative little girl that I had been? Right. What what happened to being emotional and, and sensitive and just and I, I was like, I need to like open up my heart. I need to like, you know, do heart healing. And at first that was like a foreign idea because I had cultivated my, you know, left brain, my mind, my mental body, my intellect so hard that I like my right brain, my emotions had like completely atrophied. And it was hard to even like recognize that I had to like bring myself more back into balance that I had to get the other half of myself back. I feel like that's where you guys might be at. And it is a little bit traumatic, maybe even just realizing that because of this tower. And I totally like I totally get this. This is like, you know, this is I have been exactly in this spot, which is, you know, why you guys are syncing up for this video with me, because I have been through the same energies as you. And like not very long ago, this was me like last year. So, um, yeah. With the moon, there's also I mean, yeah, bringing in your emotional body, your psychic abilities, like developing your intuition. Maybe you guys are starting to see like through the veil. Yeah, with the tower, it, you're seeing through the veil, you're starting to like question your reality, maybe even a little bit, like seeing so many synchronicities that you're starting to get suspicious, even if you were like completely rational before, even if you know entirely how to write everything off, like, you know, kind of, you know, there must be a rational explanation for this. Well, you can say that as much as you want, but it's like maybe the signs and synchronicities are piling up to the extent that like it's almost irrational to think that there is a rational explanation for it like you know at some point uh, i know i went through this at some point i just had to realize like wow so much weird shit is happening around me that it almost doesn't make sense to look for the rational explanation anymore i feel like you know the, it was like the evidence <laughs> you know or at least my experiences had been piling up to the extent where i had to go there must be more to life than just the physical there must be more to my consciousness than just my brain because look at all the stuff that is happening to me and around me and like the rational explanation no longer made sense. So you might be having something like that. You know, maybe you're even starting to like have prophetic dreams or maybe you're getting visions while you're awake or you're seeing flows of energy or you're seeing people's auras or you're just seeing like glitches in the matrix. Like, have you guys ever been like staring at a place and like seeing a tree like spawn <laughs> and you're going like, is this reality or am I in like a simulator? Because like, you know, just weird, unexplainable things. You you can be seeing and experiencing that in almost any way, but that's probably going on around you. And uh, yeah, so that's your tower moment. Your tower moment is questioning your reality, questioning maybe even your own sanity. Fun fact, you're not insane, even if you might be, you know, feeling insane. Um, and... I think I'll pull a couple of cards, of Oracle cards, to see kind of a little bit more what's happening here. Taurus, I have, okay, that coming up with the tower. Yeah, and these kings, you guys probably acquired some stuff, and now you're really questioning if you really needed it. Um, I mean, either you're coming to your own questioning, going like, do I really need all this stuff? Was it really worth it to have it? But if you're not doing that on your own, the universe is bringing you your tower moment to make you to make you question those things on your own. Um, you know, it's sort of like a Saturn, a Saturn thing where if you don't reorganize your life or question your situation yourself, Saturn will come around and reorganize your life for you <laughs> so this is your tower moment like you know maybe you know if you're watching this in april 2020 you know maybe you're really going through financial hard times and having to sell your tv to pay the rent and you know maybe you're having to downsize your house or just whatever basically that is happening for a reason the reason is 
that you need to learn what you actually like what is actually important to you and what you actually need this pro you probably have things you don't need <laughs> i mean everybody almost everybody has things they don't need because we don't actually need as much as we think we do right like the tiger wow look at these colors actually match um the tiger only needs like his strength his health his teeth and his claws right that is all he needs to survive he doesn't need a house with a three-car garage and you know a cat and a dog and 2.2 kids he only needs himself and I think that's what you guys are being called to consider. Mars force. Yeah. And your tower moment is forcing you to think about that. That is, this is, yep. Mars moment. Definitely bringing in conflict energy. This could even be manifesting in terms of like interpersonal relationships. And it is all to get you to question where you've come, where you've come from, and where you are now, and if this is where you want to stay. All of this is happening to get you to get ready for your next phase, your next, like, journey. That's what the Tower Moments do. Getting you ready for wherever you're going, because you guys have already reached, like a, like, a certain level, but the universe is like, nah, guys, you don't get to plateau. You don't just get to sit on your laurels and enjoy how far you've come. Maybe you did for, like, a little, little bit, but I feel like it was a pretty short period of time where you guys were, like, just stable and good after your, like, growth. You guys, like, hit a plateau, and immediately, like, you already have to start working on your next level up. Yup. Okay, one more card. soul journey just feast your eyes on this card for a moment yeah guys that that i i mean i don't know of a more perfect card that's it you're on your soul journey your tower moment mars is here to kind of wreck your shit to be a shit disturber, you know, to just to go around and pull the rug out from under you. But this is just remember as you're going through this tower moment and these conflicts and these kind of giving up things that you have and, you know, facing these illusions, questioning your identity, questioning reality, feeling exhausted, wondering if this is all worth it. Just come back. Remember this card, like like literally just remember it. Soul journey. Can you guys, does it look like a face in there to you guys? This is all part of your plan for your soul journey for this life. This is all to evolve your consciousness. These are the lessons you came here to learn. This is the game you came here to play. You did this to yourself. That is, and understanding that, understanding that we all do this to ourselves, that, you know, we're not just like down here suffering under the thumb of some God, right? We weren't like, no, we put ourselves here. We brought ourselves here. We designed the trajectory of our lives. We chose the lessons we were going to learn. We did this to ourselves so that we can learn something, so that we rejoin our higher selves. That, you know, we're way more awesome. And and the world we make the world around us more awesome by going through these journeys. Yeah, I don't think I need to say anything more than that. Soul journey. Soul journey. So good luck, guys. <laughs> Just remember it's going to work out for your highest good in the long run. The tower moment does not last forever. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon.